heard was Ramstein with America, and you listen to the J Red Show on ninety point seven The Music FM. And let's continue to talk about um more sports. <coughs> How many more years is left in the Boston? So I was still so with hockey. How many more years is left in the Boston Bruins Cup window? Bergeron, Chara, and Rask aren't getting any younger. Got some nice young pieces in Marshawn, Tracky, Curly, Krug. But the, guy, but the guys I mentioned above are no spring chickens. Bergeron has played many seasons as Crosby Ovechkin. But given how much these defensive responsibilities he has, it'll be interesting to see how long they can stay, sustain this high level compared to the other guys that started their careers in the post-dead puck era. <coughs> Charles 41. Um, he could be like Chalios and be ages, ages for another year or two. But does this feel like an all or, out, not all or nothing a year? Is next year still open, or is the situation where they have not not was well, this the situation where they have enough not too old guys that can come up and keep the flow of talent once the veterans cut, get there up there like San Jose with Thornton or Washington's minor league affiliates? If they win the cup, they can win another one in future seasons. Or does it seem like they're this is the best shot? If they win the cup, can they win another one in future seasons? Or does it seem like the best off shot for a few years? Uh, I don't know if they'll win 50 games for the next four to five years. Maybe 46 to 48 for a while. Marshawn's also 30, Crutcher's 32, and Brax 34. So they are on the downside of their prime. I'd say they have two to three, a two to three year window. They also don't have, have a first rounder this year, and Nash won't be around. However, they are outstanding. They are the best team in the league. Some will more the fire part than some, some goalies may outplay Rask, but the team is very solid. Um. Not sure if Chara makes it past next year, and though losing him is a big loss, I don't think it ends their run, because they have a lot of young defense coming up. Macavo and Carla are anchoring the defense, plus an offense that's been interrogating talent with young players with Pasternak, Dabrisky, Dunto, and Hain, Butchuk, and Tedde, with veterans like Bergeron and Mishan. Death pieces that are replaceable, yet on the UFA market, the Riley Nashes and the Tim Charles of the world, I think the team's competitive for a while, Basically, as long as Bergeron stays Bergeron elite for a while. I think the X Factor is Rask. He's 32 and he's inconsistent. And they let Subban go to the expression draft. He crafts out there'll be no system ready challenge in the starting spot. Um, so, um, what are your thoughts? Hit me on Twitter at JRED Show. Next question. Um, next topic. Um, I think the next decade, as much as it pains me to say this, um, I think that the next decade um, bodes well for the Leafs. Despite recent events, the, the Leafs' future looks incredibly bl- good. The Leafs are two years removed from finishing last in the league. They have ge- the generational talent in Matthews, Lee Ford, and Lee Lander and Marner. This is not the end of the Leafs. I mean, there's a lot of things that they improve, like the coaching and the, go- and the goaltending, but um, they, got, they got... I think the future is probably to Tor- right for Toronto. They are an amazing spot. Yes, they slipped and they fell, and they'll continue to stutter. And they'll continue to stutter. However, they will get better. They will learn, and they will eventually become a dominant force in the NHL yet to year. But right now, they are built for the regular season. They 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 had a very good regular season when the game is more loose. But when Boston got a lot bit more aggressive, um, they they started to, to wilt. I think they'll be good for a long time. Will they win the cup in two or three years? Probably not, but in four to five, maybe. That would be a big news. If the Bruins were good for a long time before they put it all together. They didn't really tank to get there. It makes an immense amount of talent, hard work, and leadership, toughness, identity, and world-class goaltending to win the cup these days. Toronto needs a lot of work to get there. But they have the skill and the spades. Lots of skill to go around the NHL. Winning requires wisdom. What are your thoughts? Hit me on Twitter at jrightshow. On to the NBA. Will Russell Westbrook ever change? In Game 5 against the, cha- against the Jazz, we saw both. Russell Westbrook has on an ult- maybe ultimately be flaws as an NBA superstar, but he's one of the most exciting players in the league. He led the Thunder to a jaw-dropping, blood-curling comeback from 25 points down in the elimination game, finishing with 45 points as Oklahoma City survived. This is the stuff legends are built on. From the 8-21 mark on in the third quarter, when the Jazz hit lead hit, Hits Zeth Westbrook played every second and hit and hit twelve to twenty shots. He's just five of nineteen for that point. This is who Westbrook has always been. He'll continue to keep attacking and shooting no matter what he. His game has never changed. 
Sometimes it helps. Sometimes it helps the Thunder. Sometimes it hurts them. That may be the may be why Kevin Durant eventually fled in Oklahoma City. But it's also the reason why the Thunder are never really dead until they are dead. It's the reason why the Thunder came back for Wednesday. It's why the Jazz are going to be nervous less couple more days. The game is an example of why Westbrook, uh, Westbrook's ability. In his first 21 minutes of play, Westbrook scored 12 points and 19 shots with his 3 assists and 4 turnovers. He was ice cold, which is to say he has not cracked Utah's excellent defense. A unit that has been flexible more Westbrook than other Thunder scores all series long. Despite finding good, no good shots on the floor, at least not any shots that could actually hit reliably, he just kept shooting. He didn't stop. Even though he was working, the Thunder fell behind by 25. In the last 20 minutes of play, Westbrook scored 33 or 12 or 20 shots. <coughs> Westbrook's shooting frequency didn't change at all. <coughs> when he was cold, he was shot above once per minute. When he was hot, he shot about once per minute. The symmetry is impressive. Westbrook does what he does regardless of the result. One could say that he trusts the process. The Thunder have typically won more than they've lost with Westbrook. When Westbrook's out there being Westbrook. Which is which he always is. So is discreet with the results. The interim outcomes trust the process. As what Philadelphia did. Westbrook is hardly as an is a highly analytical darling. But the theoretical uh, basis of Westbrook's attitude and his refusal to adjust to the common concepts of the hot hands, cold hands, and bugaloo moments line up perfectly with what the metric crowd supports. Data heads would prefer Westbrook to take fewer consistent pull-up jumpers, especially when those relived long twos, but Camaros is out in order. Westbrook doesn't change, no matter what's happening on the court. He's not subdued by misses. He does not swell after makes. Plenty of good NBA players could learn from that. The Thunder are in a ship of the Westbrook's captaincy, a decision that had been made to lock him up in a long to mass contract last summer. Oklahoma City signed up for this and celebrated the occasion. The Thunder made 5 or 19 stretches and got 12 or 20 in runs. The Thunder signed up for mat uh, the Madden Game 4 losses to get the magical Game 5 wins. The Thunder signed up for ever loud debates about the doom Westbrook guarantees. The path forward for Oklahoma City, then, is to determine the, how the best leverage of Westbrook's awesome power while deflecting the eternal damage his style can do. Ideally, Paul George sticks around whether that happens in an open direction. George wasn't prolific, efficient, or face-melting as Westbrook during the comeback, but he was pretty special in his own right. A top deputy who can create himself, shoot well, and defend in multiple positions. Stephen Adams is pretty close to the ideal Westbrook center. Um, beyond that, defense and threes, defense and threes, defense and threes. A Westbrook team hardly needs more than additional creative to, to start a five. What's the point? Most of the time, he's going to shoot or drive anyway. Everyone else except the Durant George creator and often needing them, even to, to be ready to catch the finish, uh, catch the shoot. Even, even, even needs to be ready to catch and finish or catch and shoot. This is, in a way, how the second Kobe dynasty worked with the Lakers. Paul Gessel was the secondary creator of the main star in the finishing unit. Andrew Bynum was a powerful inside presence. The bench was solid. Kobe Bryant otherwise ran the show despite middle inefficiency. The Lakers got by with defense and the inside power through Gessel and Bynum. If I can't realize it on Bryant's good nights. Those 08-10 Lakers that won two titles and three tips the trips to the NBA Finals also benefited from timing. Um, that was a relatively weak competitive era for the NBA. LeBron James Cavaliers supporting cast was a designator. Celtics suffered from crucial injuries at the Yo-8 title run. Thunder weren't ready yet. Spurs were an odd intra-era flux. The Magic aren't, weren't quite ready. Weren't quite good enough. The Blazers and the Rockets suffered ultimate timely injuries. Thunder did not have the benefit. This is a strong competitive era for the NBA. The Thunder no longer has their three stars. Resources to acquire top-end talent. If the Thunder lose George this summer by sliding, sliding it will be of the awful rough. That's a concern for another day. Thunder survived for another night because Westbrook is always Westbrook. That's what happens in Game 6. But he, he, he could be the reigning MVP. This is why the media can't be trusted anymore. It should just be LeBron James, but the, the media was worried that it would be viewed as lazy or unimaginative. Instead, now they look foolish. Again, I remember listening to the pundits say that you can't go by the old rules anymore, but what a player is actually most available for the team. But by the real standard, you could not make Westbrook the MVP because there are really not but it's ridiculous if it wins. As soon as Kevin Durant left, the bottom fell out. Um, 
I, I even heard one guy from Cyrus XM say LeBron James could not be great because he has none of this in the NBA. Uh, what are your thoughts on the NBA and NHL? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. And we got, we got more music coming up. We, then we got Around the Campus. So, cut next is Black Star by Radiohead. Kill 5.7, the music FM.